Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a game in Unity and welcome to episode 44. So this time we are going to carry on with our little dungeon here and I'm going to expand it a little bit and actually make it more of a dungeon so there's some place to go, not just a big random open area. Speaking of random, we're also going to add in a couple of walls which make different hallways depending on how the game decides to generate it uh, going into the game and we'll also add in a chest. So let's start by, I think firstly, I want to create a route or route or however you want to pronounce it through this dungeon and we're going to start by going up here and across the ledge and down here and we'll have like some random hallway over here but in doing so we need to stop ourselves being able to just go straight over here so I'm just going to quickly take our objects that we randomized over here and I'm just going to move them just to here a little bit kind of out, out of the way of uh, some walls Let's bring them just to there and turn them all off. Next, let's, let's just take this cube here and we can improvise with this one. So hold control, press D, bring it outwards to probably about there. I'm going to shrink it. So th this is all about how you want to design your game at this point. There's no set way of doing things. I'm just kind of doing this to represent what we're doing in the long run. So I'm going to bring it closer down here and bring it along here and align it with this wall right here and also align it with this section right here about there so you obviously take the time you need to make this a little bit better I'm just kind of not hurrying things along but just kind of getting this in place so we can get on with the fun stuff and when I say fun stuff I mean programming so I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and just have it here. Now, a good little trick about uh, game development is if the player never actually sees outside of the boundaries, like for example here, the player will never be able to see the boundary here. It doesn't matter too much what it actually looks like. So it's not worth trying to kind of make things look perfect if the let's say, player never actually sees it at any point. So if we press play now, you'll see the idea of what I'm going for. We have our first basic hallway that we're going to use. I and need yep, to find we randomised the barrel right there. So next thing to do is make ourselves able to use this ledge. And to be honest, I think we can just use this again. Bring it outwards, align it. And that should probably do the trick if we do another one. Obviously, go along and you'll want to change all your... Uh, naming conventions if you so wish to. Once again, if the player doesn't see it, you don't need to worry too much about it. It's it's just something for you to kind of remember. I feel like I'm teaching you just to kind of suck eggs at this point on how to build. So I'm going to quickly add this one in and then we're going to randomize a wall. So to actually create a, a random wall as such, what we're going to need to do is create a couple of walls which will be the actual walls that can either be randomized. So you can see here that I now have the area set for the randomization. And what I want to do is I want to have a wall here or not here, kind of going down this way, and a wall going across, but maybe not. So there could be a couple of different ways that we can do it. So let's add in our first wall. So let's take this wall here, hold control, press D, bring it out and let's shrink on the X to two. Let's place it here. So this is going to be one of the random walls. Hold control, press D. This is going to be another random wall right here. And let's create another random wall. So if we take this one here, hold control, press D and let's rotate by 90. In fact, I won't rotate by 90. I will increase the X to 10 and decrease the Z or Z to 2. Uh, let's bring that to there. And I'm going to hold control, press D again, and this is going to be another random wall. So we have four random walls that we can possibly generate from. So that means that we have to create a script. So if we go to our script folder, and let me think. Originally, we had... Um, Gosh, let me try and find the actual dungeon randomizer. That's it. So the dungeon random, if we go into here, 
So if we open up in Visual Studio, I'll quickly explain how we're going to handle this. We're going to use the same script so we don't have more than one script randomizing different things. And in the same sense that we used the um, original randomization of the sack, coffin, or barrel, we're going to do that with the walls. Now, there's going to be different ways that we can do this. For example, we could have this wall and this wall grouped together. So either these two walls appear or these two walls appear. Now, I'm going to do a randomization of all four walls. However, I will explain how you can have these two walls appear or these two walls appear. So firstly, what we need to do is if I go down, put a little annotation here and say below wall objects, just so we know what each thing is here. So public game object, and we'll have wall uh, 001. And then we'll do the same again for number two three and four, just quickly rename. So two, three, and four. And finally, we need an integer to generate one of those walls. So public int gen wall, semicolon. So it's probably worth at this point renaming these actual walls. So we'll take this one, F2, and random wall 001. Change this one to random wall 002, this one to random wall 003, and finally this one. So now we have the four random walls. So all we need to do is on start, we go gen wall equals random dot range, and it's one and five. So I've already explained uh, the whole reason why we add that one extra, because Unity decides to be a little bit silly at times. And then we just create the if statements to correspond with this object. So if gen wall equals one, then yeah, you know what to do. Wall 001.set active true, semicolon. And then we can just copy that if statement three more times and change to two. So two, three, and four. And change this to two, three, and four, and save. Now there is a lot more to randomization. I'm not gonna go into massive detail, but this little bit here of what we've done in last episode and this episode should at least give you an insight of where and how to start things going. So what we'll do now is let's press play. Actually, no, let's not press play. Let's actually add in these variables. It's my fault. So wall one, wall two, number three, and four. So if I press play now, we should see that, yep, we still have Where this generated I? here. So we need to find a way out of this wood. Let's get this working. And, okay, down into our dungeon, and you can see that we have all walls active. That's my, <laughs> that's a schoolboy error, that one. I should have actually turned them all off. It would have helped. So now only one wall will appear. And let's take a look at the hierarchy. Hopefully you can see there, Where am wall I? number two has actually I generated. Need to find a way out of this wood. So let's quickly check. Check what we're doing. And let's head over. And we should be able to see. Perfect. Only that second wall has generated. So if we press play again, we should be able to see wall number two is generated again. And again, let's see. Looks like wall number four has generated this time. And I can tell because you can see that is highlighted differently. So if we went over there, that wall number four would be generated. Okay, so let's try something quickly different here. Let's have two walls active at the same time. Now, the good thing about this is that we don't necessarily need to have all these variables here. We could annotate out that one and that one, generate between one and three, and we don't need these here, so we can get rid of these here. And the idea of what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to add walls, let's say one and three and two and four together. And it's pretty simple to be honest. We could just go with wall three, add that to wall one and wall two, add that to wall four or vice versa, whichever you want. And in the dungeon randomizer, if we save the script, head back and we should only have two walls. There we go. So two walls. So let's add wall one there and number four there. So everything within this object will appear and everything within, within this object will appear if it does randomize. So in doing so, let's turn on the child objects within these. So when these do turn on, everything else turns on inside it. So let's give this a go. We now should see two walls have appeared. Where am I? I need to find a way out of this wood. There's a bit of a drop there, that could be dangerous. We might do something with that actually, guys. So let's head this way. There's one wall and there's another wall. Perfect, so I'm happy with that. So that could change each time you load the game and it's up to you how much randomization you want to put in. So now let's add in that chest that I promised. Let's go to our objects folder right here and drag and drop this treasure chest straight into here give it a second to import and you can get this on the website for free head on over there head to the downloads and assets section so treasure chest and just drag and drop this chest let's have it right here uh, we need to rotate by 90 excellent so you can see what's going on here when we randomize the dungeon this chest will always be static so this chest will always appear here but the wall may appear here or it may not. So depending on how we react in the game, you know, we might have a different result. So let's quickly see if we can have that wall there. Where am I? And I, I need to don't think it will appear, but wood. let's just see what happens. So at the moment, we've created a couple of different variations of what could possibly be this dungeon. And everything you've learned here, you should be able to implement in a different way. So there's our chest. So what I'm hoping to do at least for now, is get the chest working. So we'll start by, let's get rid of the little padlock. Don't really want a padlock on it right now because it's kind of irrelevant, I guess. So what we'll do is we'll make the chest actually open up. So we need to establish which is part the top of the chest. So you've got this one, which is the top default. Uh, not that one, not that one, although I don't really want the rivets so we can get rid of them. And I think that should be it. So the frame and the top, so let's add those together. So top default goes into frame top default and hopefully that whole top should move together. So we need to add these two sides which don't really want to work properly, but hey, there we go. So now we have a complete chest. Let's move it back into position. There we go, my apologies, and get rid of those sides. Perfect, so now the chest will actually move just the top. So let's get that swinging. Now, click on chest, 3D object, cube, and we're gonna use this as the, um, the pivot point. Now we've done this before on the door and the process is going to be virtually the same. It's just on a horizontal axis rather than a vertical axis. So I'm going to shrink this to points. In fact, I'll keep that as one. Um, point one by point one. So now we align this as we did with the door at the point where we pivot, which is there. And then cube becomes the parent object of the frame top and top default. So now when we rotate cube, not that way, rotate on the X, you can see that we now have the ability to open and close the chest. So let's quickly animate that before we finish this episode up. Might be wise turning off the mesh renderer. So let's click on our animation folder, click on animation. Let's create, in fact, I'll rename the cube first, I think, uh, rename and pivot point and click on create and we'll have chest pivot and click 
record. So next thing we need to do is set the actual rotation of this pivot point. So let's set the X as one and zero. You know, we've already gone over animation. We don't really need to explain again. And we'll open over the course of a second. So we'll go to frame 60 and then we'll rotate as high as we want the chest to be, which is, let's say there. And then let's stop the animation and then head back and we will quickly change around what we need to do here so we can remove animator add component and add animation because we want to control the animation and drag and drop chest pivot right there size one and chest pivot and untick play automatically and then last thing we need to do as we've done before is debug legacy back to normal and wrap mode is once because we only want it to happen once and we know how this works now that's pretty much the animation set for the script so next episode what we're going to do is we're actually going to do quite a bit next episode we're actually going to get this working so we're going to be able to click the chest chest opens and we're also going to work on different scenes so we're going to look at an animated splash screen and a splash screen is something i'll explain more ne next episode but it's basically your studio name uh, some credit scene and we'll also look at linking things together scene wise so guys until that next episode you play around with your randomization i know it's, there's not massive amounts of randomization that we can do here but i've given you at least the basics to kind of build yourself forward it'd be a lot of fun to do so and i will see you in the next episode guys thank you very much for watching